And since I started this uh, recording, I can say this because I just remembered. There's a question that's been asked on the Net Church of the Nazarene in Princeton for about three weeks now. Are you prayed up, packed up, and ready to go? So I looked at Debbie and I said, well, she took a picture of it. That's how I found out about it. And then she sent it to Penny to show to Walter. I said, am I prayed up? No. Am I packed up? No. Am I ready to go? Well, yeah, when I read signs like that, I'm ready to go. <laughs> anyway, if you would, Ephesians chapter 1, once again. I got to talking to Walter on the phone, and I'm stuck here for a little bit. I want to begin reading, uh, well, I want to read verse 17 again through 19. Verses 17 through 19 of Ephesians chapter 1. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. And what, is the, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. According to the working of his mighty power. Now I have entitled this three things you will know. I started to entitle it the three what's because three things you will know according to the Apostle Paul here you will know what is the hope of his calling you will know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the Saints and you will know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to his mighty power so that's the three things I don't know if we're going to get to them today but because I do have an introduction and it's basically the same introduction that I had last week things change in you and to you because of being born from above. And things change in you and to you because you believe. I mean, Paul's very plain in this. Now, there's a reason for this change. And that reason has a name. His name is God. Because this is all every single bit of this is his work and it's according to his mighty power it's not up to you even though you will be active in it we'll show it it, it, it tells you plainly here you're passive in the reception of this we have obtained it but in that obtaining that word is in the Greek it's passive because we cannot obtain to spiritual things. We cannot get saved as it is preached today. We cannot get salvation. It's a gift. And we are passive in the getting. If that's good English or not, I don't know. The Lord, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory gives, in the last of verse 17, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It's a gift. And Paul prayed for this because Jesus Christ had promised it. He promised to send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth which came from the Father. What did Christ say about him? He 
shall testify of me. He will show things, things to come. He will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. He shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Now I believe wholeheartedly that's what this means by the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. That's the Holy Spirit. It's not the spirit of this world. Because the spirit of this world cannot understand the things of the spirit of God. It can't. It not only lacks the ability, it lacks the faculty. See, it's not only that we are unwilling, we are incapable. Why? Because we are lacking spirituality, true spirituality. Now, we have a spirit. We have a spirit. But it's not the spirit of God. And we have that spirit naturally, the spirit of this world. We were happy as clams in it. I don't know how happy clams really are, but that's the expression. I prefer the expression, I was in myself, in my sin, and I was, uh, to quote a professor of mine at Bluefield State, I was there fat, dumb, and happy. I wasn't looking for God, and as far as I knew, Walter, he wasn't looking for me. But I, he knew where I was. But I wasn't looking for him. God gives unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and it's in the knowledge of him. It's not in the knowledge of this world. It's not in the wisdom of this world. It's in the knowledge and the wisdom, which is who is our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this next verse, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his, of, of his inheritance in the saints. So the first thing I looked at was the word eyes. Now the deep meaning of that word is eyes. That's what it translates. That's, that's what it means. It's your eyes, eyeballs. But by implication, because you have these eyes, by implication it means vision. See, it's not only you got eyes, it's what you see. And in this case, it's who you see. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Because you have vision, you see. There are people who have eyeballs that don't see. But because you have this vision, you see. And Paul is writing here that our vision has changed. For the better. Let's emphasize that part of it. It has emphasized, my vision has changed, now I need these glasses I didn't used to. But here he's talking about a spiritual seeing. Perception, perceive is the other word. Now, we are limited in the use of our own eyes to the natural use. My eyes can only focus on one thing at a time. That's the way my eyes work. I had a, I, I remember being a kid and I had the hardest time seeing fish in a creek, Mason. People say, oh, look at those fish, look at those minnows. And I'd, be, I'd see the creek, I'd see the water until I learned to focus below the surface. Now my eyeballs hadn't changed, but my vision had. What I was seeing changed. Because at first I'd see the surface, then you can look, if you, if you can actually change the focus, you can see below the surface, and then if you want to, if you can change a little bit more, you can see the bottom. I thought about this like, well, you, you all 
y'all know I like taking pictures. It's hard for me to look at the first pictures I took because they're not that good. <laughs> now, at the time, I thought they were fine. At the time, they were the best I could do. But as I have been over the years taking pictures, I think I've gotten better at it. My eye had changed. That's the way they say it. You've got a good eye. Well, my eye hadn't changed, but my vision had. It was my eyeball. But I can look at something right now and I can decide instantly that I can't get a good picture of that. Now I can look at this scripture and I can see Christ's words in it. I can see his story in it. I can see his life in it, his words in it, his truth in this word. And that's what it means. My eyes haven't changed. I've been given vision. In this case, I've been given a seeing eye. And guess where that comes from? The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made even both of them. They came from him. Our vision has been focused by God to actually now be able to see the things of Christ Jesus. In his word, in this world, and in each other's words. But Paul specified this a little bit more when he said the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Now there are some versions who translate this word as understanding as the word heart. And I understand what they're saying and why they say that because in those days at that time they thought one of the things they thought the center of, of thinking was in the heart. But the word actually means, it's a compound Greek word, and it actually means deep thought. So this are, these are the eyes of your deep thoughts. Now I don't mean to put the emphasis on the deep things of God. This is about your inner most being where you live where you are in your mind your eyes have been enlightened to understand in the core of your being as best as you can as best as it's been revealed to you the things of the Spirit of God <coughs> Because what Paul is writing here is with your eyes open and you perceiving there is a change deep within you in your innermost thoughts. A good change. A good change. And never forget this is your understanding. It is personal. I can't mediate for you. I can't understand for you. Walter can't understand for you. All we can do is preach. This is yours. This is the gift to every child of God. Paul's writing of your eyes and your understanding. So the question naturally arises do you understand do you have this wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him and I mean deep within your soul deep within yourself because if it ain't there it doesn't matter if it's on the surface. 
if he is not a part of you, if the spirit is not in you, he can't bear witness that you are the child of God. When you strip everything away, what's down deep? Is it the love of Christ? Is it the love of his word? Is it the love of the gathering of the saints to hear about him, to talk about him, to learn about him, and to bow to him? What he says is true no matter what I think. This is what changes for every child of God once the eyes of your understanding have been enlightened. Again, this is a verb. It's in the perfect, the past tense. And guess what it is? It's passive. You don't enlighten yourself. Now you do study to show thyself approved, a work, good worker unto God. A man need not be ashamed. You do study. But the knowledge, the enlightenment of your eyes and your understanding comes from God. Just like the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That comes from God. But you have been enlightened. Literally this word means to brighten up. Because understand this also, the light has always been there. Jesus Christ is light. The light's always been here. We just couldn't see it. We just couldn't understand it. The light always shines. That's what light does. It shines, or it's not a light. He's always been the light, and Christ the light has always shined, and we just couldn't see it. We had our understanding. Turn over a page, if you would. Ephesians 4 and verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, what? In the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. The world has an understanding. And you had an understanding before God gave you this understanding. But that understanding of the world and that understanding of the unregenerate is darkened. It's darkened. You couldn't see. But your eyes have changed now. If you're in him, your eyes have changed. Your understanding has changed. Because of his enlightenment. His gift. All of it comes from him. Now this is what... Christ told his disciples and actually what Christ did for his disciples in the last I think it's the last chapter of Luke chapter 24 let me get there Luke chapter 24, verse 44. This is Christ speaking to his disciples after they had ate. 
And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was wet, yet with you, and all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Verse 45, he says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. What Christ did for his disciples right there, in person, the spirit of wisdom and revelation does for every believer. Now. Right now. The scripture doesn't change. We change. We change. And if God changes you, it is for the better. He opens our understanding and guess what? You start understanding. <laughs> that was the weirdest thing to me when all this started. That I could read something in this book and it actually started to make sense to me, Walter. Uh, we talked before about the book of Hebrews. There's a lot of people who stay away from the book of Hebrews because there's some hard stuff in there. And they say it's a Jewish book. It's written to Jews. And it is. It is. But my Catholic background gave me a nice little perspective to look at when they started talking about the priesthood. Because I'll tell you a secret. The Catholics want to be the priests that the Jews were. That's what they want to take over. That's what they've tried to take over. They say they are the authority. That's what that guy with the funny hat sitting on that chair in Rome is. They say he is the vicar of Christ. I'm here to tell you, Christ doesn't need a vicar. He never did. And that book helped me from where my perspective of being under a priesthood for 23 years, even though it wasn't a Jewish priesthood, it helped me understand that I didn't need a priest. I had a great high priest. My understanding had changed for the better. I have a great high priest and I can go to him. Matter of fact, in another place it says he's made us kings and priests unto our God. And to make it even funnier from a Catholic perspective, he made me a saint. A set apart one. I have been set apart by God and you have been set apart by God. And you have been given the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, and revelation in the knowledge of him so that you can know Christ right now. You can know him. And through Christ, knowing Christ, you know the Father. And the Father has sent you the Spirit. And his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. What a gift. What a glorious gift that we have been given. We get to understand the scriptures. That's what it says here. He opened their understanding that they might, what? Understand the scriptures. You may not understand the world and sometimes that's a good thing. Christ told some fellas, ye search the scriptures, because in them they thought they had eternal life. We told them, no. 
they are they which testify of me. So if you're searching the scriptures, if you're reading the scriptures, and you're not seeing Christ, you're missing the point. Because that's the only point there is. That's the only message there is. That's the only gospel there is. It's Christ. And you will not see everything. But the scriptures are our only reference. That's what that sola scriptura means in the Latin. Soli, solo, solely, scriptures. And that's what Christ gave to his disciples and that's what the spirit of wisdom and revelation gives to us and that's what it means to have your eyes of your the eyes of your understanding enlightened. God has given it to you to be able to understand his scriptures. Whether someone's speaking them or whether you're reading them and studying them. That's a gift of God. We are told, try the spirits to see whether or not these things be so. What do you try them with? Scriptures. This is all we have. Now, I've got some books, and i got some books from David that gave me the worlds, and they've been a great help to me to see what other people see. But this is what I go by. Because there's some things in those books I disagree with. And the reason I disagree is because in here, this is the basis for our knowledge that God has given us. Christ opened the eyes of his disciples to the scriptures. Now, I'm not saying this book is holy. You know, it's paper, it's ink, it's marked up, it got left out in the snow for a week. I had to come back and get it. But the words in here, the word of God is in here. And the word of God is always true. Believers understand him to the best of their ability to what he has given them. And there's a statement in Revelations, I remember reading it when I preached on this in Luke 24. What Christ has opened, no man shuts. No man shuts. Once he's opened your understanding of the scriptures, they're open and they're going to stay that way. What did he continue? Our understanding continues. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Our understanding, this wisdom back in Ephesians, all right, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I'll get there in a minute. That the God, the Father, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. This was Paul's prayer for you. This is our prayer today. That this continue. These eyes that have been given of your understanding being enlightened is still enlightened today. Our understanding from God is not darkness but light. In our enlightenment 
our eyes that have been enlightened, our understanding, our deep thoughts that have been enlightened by God will not be darkened. Now there's still darkness in us. The flesh is still here. But that's where the battle is. It's light against darkness. Paul prayed for this, for these Ephesian believers. They already knew some stuff. Guess what? There's more to learn. There's always more to learn. Our understanding is by no means perfect, but it has been enlightened. Our understanding is by no means complete. Otherwise, Paul wouldn't have said, we go from, well, we go from glory to glory. We are to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why? Because we need to. You never have it all. That's why we continue. And if you continue, you're my disciples. If you're my disciples, you'll continue. And that's why we have this written here for us today. Because it's still the same. The Father sends the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. And he sends it to every believer he has, the eyes of their understanding being enlightened. I told you I wasn't going to get to those three things. But I will say this. There is a purpose for this here. Paul states plainly by this little word that that ye know the hope of his calling that ye know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and that ye know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to his mighty power. We who are without strength, strengthless, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. And when he has borne us from above, we have been born from above, we have been given the Holy Spirit, and the eyes of our understanding having been enlightened, we begin to understand the things of him. And we continue on. We know some things because we know him. We know some things because we know him. He did not leave us alone in this world. His spirit is in us and teaches us the things of him even to this day until tomorrow if we got it. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful again for this place and this time. Thank you for your word for your power, for your love, for your righteousness, your holiness, everything we have, we've been given by you. And it's according to your purpose and grace. It's according to your goodness and your glory. Thank you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.